Hello again. So I wanted to go over a few more things that some of you will be able to do that will find very helpful, but not everyone will be able to do this, hence why it's a separate video. So what I want to talk about is doing percent error. So percent error is a better way to talk about how accurate are you. So yes, you can use the chart that you made to figure out your accuracy. Does it follow a trend line that you would expect? So on this one, we can say that I'm still fairly accurate. The problem is it doesn't quite work that well because this issue down here and this issue at the top, the fact that they're kind of quite a bit different, uh, makes it seem, I don't know, how accurate am I really? So here's another way to do it. The problem is not everyone will be able to do it this way because it requires you to have an expected value. Some of you will have an expected value that you can calculate. I can do that here. But not all of you will have an expected value that you can calculate. So if you know an equation, then just type in the equation like I'm doing here. But if you don't have an equation, it might be... Uh, it might be worth thinking, is there a number that I expect it to be? Uh, because if there is a number you think it should be, then you just go ahead and do that. Again, if you don't actually know, then again, that's fine. Uh, what am I doing here? Talking and writing in the wrong things. Uh, there we go. Okay. So if you're not exactly sure what it's supposed to be, you could do a calculation or you can say, oh, I know what it should be. Uh, it should be uh, 10 or it should be 12. Or for example, let's say that you throw a regular paper airplane and that's your expected. So then you compare all yours to that. Uh, or if you're saying, how do speeds other than fastballs, how, how are they different? So I throw a fastball a bunch of times. Awesome, bud. So uh, how... Well, so if my fastball is 95 miles, and I mean, for me, it's like 99, maybe even 100. Uh, but how do my other pitches compare to that? So if my fastball is 112 uh, and my slider is 98, then my expected would be my 112 mile an hour fastball, and I compare everything else to that. So once you have an expected value, if you can figure out what that is, and if you're not sure, ask me and I'll help you. Uh, to do the percent error, use the percent error equation that we have. And the percent error equation that we've used is expected minus, oh, I should, I should start over. You want this to be an absolute value because otherwise you're going to have negative signs that will throw off any average you try to do. So do absolute value first. Okay, then it is uh, expected minus measured, and this needs to be in parentheses, expected minus the measured divided by the expected times 100. And there's my percent error. Here's why this is so helpful. Because these numbers, you can say, hey, my percent error needs to be less than 20% to be considered uh, fine. It needs to be less than 10% to be good. And it should be less than 5% to be great. And these are all pretty much less than 5%. So that means that my accuracy is terrific. Uh, and I'm in really good shape on this. And so even though my graph shows that I'm a little bit off, I can say later, oh, that's because I didn't do period squared. I just just period. Uh, and again, just like we've done before, it's helpful to find an average of your percent error because then you can say overall my percent error is uh, 1.76. Percent. Uh, let's not worry about number of standard deviations. This will be fine for our purposes. So my average uh, accuracy, my average percent error is 1.7. That's obviously really, really good for what my purpose is here. So these are two more things that will help you. If you can find an expected, you should do this. If you can't find an expected, that's fine. Uh, for example, let's say you're doing a car one, you're doing gas mileage. What is what is the expected gas mileage for your car on city driving? Or what is the expected mi gas mileage for your car on highway driving? Or whatever it is. You can use those numbers to compare all of your trials to. Okay, When I uh, went 40 miles an hour, the average uh, rate that I use gas is this. Uh, but when I go 50, it's this. And 60, it's this. And this compares to how much my car is supposed to do on city driving. Those are all things you can do to just further prove your point. The whole point of doing the data analysis, the reason this is so important, is this makes your argument really easy. 
because you just go back and you say, well, I did my trials and I got these things. Here they are. And then I figured out my average value. Bam, here it is. And here's how far apart my numbers are from each other. And that's either good or it's bad. And here I put these numbers together. And when I put these numbers together, it gives me this. And this shows the relationship between them. And then to further test my accuracy, I did this stuff to figure out how accurate I was. These are all things that you can do that just makes proving your point easier. So try all this out. See what you guys are able to do and uh, have best of luck with that again if you're having any trouble please please let me know bye